is of the Latino Theater oh, Commons. Oh, Tonight, we have also been witness to a particular portrait, the portrait of an artist as a creator. We have seen wonderful work and wonderful artists creating new worlds. And so tonight, we will begin to honor those creations. And we will do that by participating in the weaving of a collective story, is what we are here to do. That weaving of a story is the changing of the American theater. And that story, the changing of American theater, is at the heart of the story of the Latino theater commons. And so to begin tonight, and this ceremony, and this story, it is fitting, given this festival of playwrights, we return to a playwright, a woman who had the vision as a playwright to create stories, but also in her position as a resident playwright to use that position to dream a collective dream for all of us. And so tonight, we'd like to have our first speaker come up. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the visionary, Karen Sacarillas. <laughs> of your story. You don't feel that you should be the one who wins the girl or wins the prize or values your life. So starting to take ownership of our story started to become really important, not just for me, but for my sister and then for my friends. And then I realized that all of us started feeling like this. What's special about this movement is that it's moving constantly. Not one person owns it, it belongs to all of us. There was eight people that got together. Some of us didn't even know each other. We had no agenda. And we said, what would you do with your fellow artist if you could? And in those 24 hours that we talked, everything that we dreamed was impossible has come to fruition. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and those eight people, if you're here, can you raise your hand? Okay, there you go. destinations are all important and the journey is one that we have to take together so this is just the beginning of a long road and we better get used to being the protagonists of everything Like, hi, 
kind of help get this whole thing moving and keep moving. And I think we should continue being a movement that doesn't stay in one place, that isn't owned by one person, that doesn't stay in one building or one town or have, you know, um, institutional on top of it so that it can, you can volley it and volley it and volley it and I'm ready to volley it to somebody else. So I hope somebody catches the ball mm. somewhere else and we keep throwing it around. Thank you so much. Thank you, Karen. Now we'd like to just take a moment and ask everybody who's in the other room if you'd like to come forward with your chairs for a second so that people can see. Please take a moment. If you'd like to bring anybody, your chair forward, feel free. Or anybody would anybody like to grab a chair, so please take a moment. Or you can scoot in as plenty of space. Just want to get chairs in the front here so that people behind you can see. Chairs in the front. Chairs in the front. If you can't see, make it happen so you can. Oh, that's right. They're not even taking it. I'm going to leave this here. Is that okay? <laughs> That was a hard call. That was tricky. Was tricky. You were good. <laughs> so you can keep moving while I, I, we continue our program. A few moments ago, I asked you to, to imagine that we were all participating in the portrait, the portrait of the artist as a creator, as given voice by our beautiful playwrights assembled here tonight. Right now, I'd like you to take a moment, though, and we're going to imagine a new portrait or it's actually an older portrait. It is the portrait of the artist as an advocate. And we have selected five honorees tonight that we'd like to share and introduce to all of you, though most of them, all of them, need no introduction. But these five individuals embody the spirit of the artist as an advocate. So what does that mean for us? Well, it means that all of us are not in a vacuum. Is that we all need supporters, supporters of the art, supporters in our career, supporters in places. And these five particular individuals at one point shepherded four different programs that are responsible for nurturing the new voices that are present in this room today. We acknowledge that we all stand upon the soldiers of giants and we have numerous giants present in this room. And tonight we acknowledge these five as our giants as well and the programs that they shepherded and gave to us as gifts for future generations. So we will begin first with the story, briefly, of the Hispanics Playwrights Project and a person who shepherded it for many years. <laughs> the Hispanic Playwrights Project at South Coast Rep was an annual new play festival founded in early 1980s by Jose Cruz Gonzalez to nurture and promote new Latino plays and playwrights. And in 1997, Juliet Carrillo was named as the director of the HPP. And she served as the director until it closed in 2004. During her tenure, Juliet shepherded dozens of Latino plays into the field and gave many Latina writers opportunities to develop their work and gain national recognition in the process. Additionally, she offered Latina and Latino directors and dramaturgs and as actors opportunities to work with their fellow playwrights at the HPP, creating a national nexus for Latino theater. Since 2004, Juliet has continued this work of promoting voices and visions of Latino playwrights and projects. As a director, she has directed shows critically acclaimed premieres and revival productions in theaters across the country, such as the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, the Mark Taper Forum, South Coast Rep, Yale Rep, the Denver Theater Center, and Seattle Repertory, to name a few. And as a member of Cornerstone Theater, she has developed work and given voice to communities who may not have ever seen their voices appeared on the stage. And so this spirit that she has for nurturing generations and for championing the voices through powerful art is present also in her work as a member of the Latino Theater Commons. 
And so she is a deep inspiration to all of us. So in recognition of her passion, spirit, imagination, and commitment, the LTC presents... <laughs> of so many incredible playwrights during this time was that we were not only nurturing Latino and Latina playwrights, we were nurturing an entire community. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even though we only met a couple of weeks a year, I saw incredible growth spurts during that time. And the playwrights, the directors, dramaturgs, actors, it was deeply invigorating. And the work continues. How many people here uh, in the audience have participated in HVP? Wow. Fantastic. Yay. After HPP shut down, I went into mourning, uh, but I also knew I needed to take time away from the community, find a, my path as an artist. But when Karen Zacharias put out the call to action, she threw down the gauntlet, <laughs> uh, it came at a perfect time. I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to join a movement that is changing the world una palabra at a time. I also want to take this moment to thank Lisa personally for her tireless enthusiasm. <laughs> yes, it was an LTC event uh, created and supported by a huge group of people, including our superstar producer, Abigail Vega. Yeah. <laughs> but the vision and the courage to make it happen in such a short period of time. <laughs> so thank you. jointly shepherded the Latino Theater Initiative. In 1992, Center Theater Group established the Latino Theater Initiative to reflect the Los Angeles Latino population by producing new Latino plays. In 1995, Diane Rodriguez and Luis Alfaro were named co-directors of the initiative. During their seven-year tenure, they developed dozens of plays and commissioned over 50 new Latina, Latino works as part of the year-round program. And in, 19, in 2003, Luis was appointed the director of new play development at Center Theater Group, and Diane continued with the Latino Theater Initiative until 2005 when the program ended. 
In the years following the Latino Theater Initiative, Diane has emerged as the ultimate artist as advocate, nationally and internationally. Within her position as Associate Artistic Director for Theater Center Group and as the Board President of Theater Communications Group. She has served as a mentor to many generations of new Latino artists, nurturing their work, their voices, and their leadership. There are many people here who consider her a mentor, myself among them. But as a director, she has also developed the work of famous playwrights, Nilo Cruz, Lynn Cottage, Nottage, excuse me, John Leguizamo, Jose Cruz Gonzalez, Octavio Solis, Culture Clash, Oliver Mayer, Italia Cruz, and Jerry Moraga. And she has received Best Directing nominations for her work on Spicarama and Culture Clash's Border Town. She is also an Obie Award winning actor, playing multiple roles in numerous works and receiving credit and awards. And here in Chicago, she is no stranger to the theater scene. Her work as a playwright has been produced by Teatro Luna and the 16th Street Theater and was nominated for a uh, recommended Jeff, the Jeff recommendation, excuse me, for her play, Living Large in a Mini Kind of Way. So she lives the dual existence of artist and leader. Mm -hmm. And a testament to that is her recent nomination by President Obama to serve on the National Council of the Arts. Yeah. <laughs> As a champion of new Latina plays and new Latino voices, the LTC presents the Carnaval 2015 Award for Outstanding Advocacy <laughs> to Diane Rodriguez. <laughs> It's like something happens in my solar plexus that I just kind of like go in a zone and then I just I trust that I'm going to create something. And that feeling uh, has, t has taken me to other places. And so as a, as a, as a you know, a, 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 an, a, an activist and as somebody who, who really believes that, I value three things tremendously. And one is the, the, the thing of opening doors because I've had, like so many of you, many, many doors that have closed to me. And I'm like, okay, all right, cool, 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 I'll figure out, you know, Richard Montoya always teases me that, you know, I'm the queen of strategizing, and it's true. I mean, I'm like, I pull back, look at the bigger picture, and go, okay, I, I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna find an open door, I'm gonna open it, and then I'm gonna hold it open for more people to come through. Yeah. guiding principle. I was like, I'm there to open doors, and I'm not going to quit. I'm, I'm just not going to quit. If I have access, I'm going to be there to open those doors. The second thing is, is I feel like sometimes I have to be like a boxer, right? And I'm, I'm duking it out, right? And I, I, get, I, get, I get thrown down. But I feel like I'm a champ, right? Mm -hmm. Now, a champ, not in the ego way, but a champion for my community, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna fight and I'm gonna win, right? Because I'm not doing it for myself, I am, I am. But I'm doing it for everybody too. And it makes me stronger, right? So that's, that's the other guiding principle. And the third one is activism. And 
when you have a generosity of spirit to your community, they will give back. And I, I feel that's happening right now. I feel that I've given and, and it's, it's coming back. And that I have truly, uh, I, I, you know, in the, in the teatro, you know, we, we the, the concept of being like Esh, which, you know, has become, you know, it, the, the truth of it is a, is a beautiful thing. Because I look at you, and you are me, and I am you. And, and the, the, it, the, if you give, because you're giving to yourself, and you will get back. And that spirit will carry you for the rest of your life, and you will never be alone. Because you have a spirit, you have a community that supports you. And I am extremely comforted by that. So thank you all so very much. to his numerous protégés, Luis Alfaro. His plays have been produced all throughout the country. Those of you who have produced his plays, shout it out. Shout out who has produced his plays. So his vision and his voices have graced the stages. But he is known as a great chronicler of this story and of communities, wherever he goes teaching and also spreading the word and recording our story in the here and now. Most recently, he has become the resident playwright at the OSF. And there this continues to nurture new voices for the American stage, as well as bringing stories and visions that have not been seen to the American stage. It is with great honor that we bring the maestro up, and in recognition of his ongoing leadership and vision, chronicling our stories as a maestro of our field and of our people, we honor Luis Alfaro. <laughs> I'm so uh, excited uh, to share. I have to share first, just seriously, to say that we joined a program that was already in progress and it was run by Jose Luis Valenzuela and Evelina Fernandez. So, I'm also very happy because uh, although we had a long and really extraordinary history, we had the amazing pleasure of having uh, a scholar create a book about our program. Yay. And it's Dr. Chantal Rodriguez. Yay. So uh, if Dr. Chantal actually did her work, and we were about to check, she did, because I went through and checked, and, um, and in my time at the taper, I'm so proud to say that we gave uh, 48 Latino artist commissions, and we did 184 different produced events. Can you believe that? So uh, that was an amazing, and extraordinary time. But I just want to say something really quick about that experience because it's, it was bittersweet, and I'm and I'm really really grateful for it. And the lesson that I learned was that um, even though I laughed and it was hard to leave. I had a great mentor in Irene Fornes, and I, you know, it was Irene really that guided me through an ex uh, amazing experience about moving on and how important it is for us to move on mm -hmm. and to have movement, right? And to keep our careers going and to keep writing and to not stop the work. And I had an amazing experience at the taper uh, many years ago with the staff 
uh, one year where people were very angry at, uh, at us for uh, certain artists we were producing. And they said, you know, that, that person is not going to give you the Pulitzer Prize. And I said, you know what? That is a Pulitzer Prize winning playwright. We are six plays away from the Pulitzer. And if we think about that, it's our job not to be, um, to be supporting those writers, those young artists in the room right now who are six Pulitzer Prize winning plays away from the world. Right? I, 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 I came to art because I wanted to change the world. I was always lonely as a writer, uh, you know, when I was first starting out. Uh, to be a young queer Latino in downtown LA was really hard because, you know, it, was, it took a, the Latino community a hard time to embrace the queer part of me. And it took uh, the queer community a long time to embrace the Latino part of me. So I used to, if you guys know my early career, I used to wear a little black slip when I looked good in a black slip. And, uh, and I would go to uh, Latino events in a black slip. Everybody remembers that. And, uh, and then I would go to the other events and, and do my Latino work at the queer events. And I think that's our job. Our job is to be the diplomats. Our job is to break open those doors. Our job is to um, always say yes. So I get in trouble a lot because I say yes a lot. But I think that's our job, to say yes. Si se puede. Yeah. <laughs> of the Oregon Shakespeare Festival in 2007. <coughs> he brought along his longtime collaborator and fellow Cornerstone Theater Ensemble member, Christopher Asiba. <laughs> and internationally known, award-winning scenic and costume designer, Christopher joined the OSF as Associate Artistic Director. In 2011, alongside the OSF company member, Armando Duran, Christopher shepherded and founded the Latino Play Project at OSF, dedicated to developing new Latino plays, many of which have gone on to full productions at OSF's regular season. As a designer, Chris designs three shows a year for OSF, and his design work has appeared across stages throughout the nation. Seattle Rep, Arena Stage, Yale Rep, Lincoln Theater Center, Mark Taper Forum, Berkeley Rep, San Diego Rep, La Jolla Playhouse, Denver Theater Center, and here in Chicago, the Goodman Theater. Woo. Yeah. In 2013, Christopher the Leader was named Arts Commissioner of Oregon, joining eight other col excuse me, colleagues statewide. And in 2014, the show that he designed, the sets for, all the way, won the 2014 Tony Award wow. for Best Book. <laughs> so, his passionate belief in the power of community of artists, all artists, to reflect and make meaningful change within the nation. The LTC presents the Carnaval 2015 Award for Outstanding Advocacy to Christopher Asibo. <laughs> Giants have been in the back, pacing back and forth, completely nervous about this moment. San Francisco Giants. I think I want to talk a little bit about uh, LPP. Um, it is a direct uh, descendant of uh, uh, Latino Theater Initiative and the HPP, um, uh, or, uh, two programs that nurtured me as an artist coming out and fig trying to figure out how I fit into uh, a community, and it offered a, a space to be an artist. It offered me a space to be myself, and uh, and to build arts in a very, very uh, profound way. Um, 
Oh, I'm so nervous. There's something about speaking in front of your community that's, that's both exhilarating and also like humbling. So I think those two things are happening um, right now for me. Um, thank you so much. Um, LPP, uh, as I said, is a direct descendant of those, of those programs and uh, wanting to create a space for artists to come and create their work. Um, and it's on a trajectory, I think, LPP, much like um, uh, that satellite that just took pictures of Pluto and sent them back. Um, we are uh, on, a, on, a, on a discovery, on a path of discovery. And um, a lot like Pluto, um, Ashland is this mysterious <laughs> outlier that is shifting its orbit. And, um, With a big heart shape. Yes, and also very difficult to get to. <laughs> Uh, but unlike, unlike Pluto, there are very few Latinos in Ashland, Oregon. And in fact, in the Pacific Northwest, uh, uh, there are more Latinos in um, Pluto, I think. <laughs> uh, so unlike uh, Chicago, or Los Angeles, or Orange County, or Dallas, or New York, or Miami, or uh, all these cities, uh, the Pacific Northwest has to search for community. We have to have intention to find the Latinos and the artists of color that are that are in that part of the world. So LPP was born uh, from that need, I think, from the need to uh, uh, build community and find uh, the mirror image of yourself and find the greatness that we have for, uh, for that collective uh, artistry that we have. So I want to thank you all for allowing me to be on that great uh, journey, that path of discovery with, uh, with this program and uh, for this great recognition. Thank you so much, appreciate it. <laughs> Shakespeare Festival back here to Chicago. <laughs> the man who claims this place as home. And a program that still continues to this day. So in 1990, building on the shoulders of a nation burgeoning Latino theater scene in Chicago, Henry Godinez, alongside fellow actor Eddie Torres, founded Teatro Vista to create opportunities for the Latina and Latino artists here in Chicago and also to the, provide a platform for new work. In 1990s, Henry joined the Goodman Theater's Artistic Collective, where he has served as an artistic associate ever since. And in 2002, he used this position within the Goodman Theater to establish the Latino Theater Festival at the Goodman Theater, bringing dozens of local, national, and international Latino artists to the Goodman Theater stages. And as they say, the proof is in the pudding. Right. Henry's successes as a passionate advocate for Latino theater at the Goodman have resulted in countless Latina world premiere productions and regular integrated Latina and Latino programming on the Goodman's venerable stages. And apart from his work on the Goodman stage, he is also an associate professor at Northwestern, which speaks to his commitment to developing and the training of future generations of Latino theater artists. Yeah. As a professor, as a director, nationally. And so, in recognition of his ongoing national advocacy for Latino theater, and as advocacy that is central to Chicago theater, the LTC presents the Carnaval 2015 award to Henry Godinez. <laughs> dreadlocks on this crown, but I <laughs> Okay, first things first. Um, Kinan was talking about giants among us. There are uh, many giants that have made it possible for the five of us to do what we do. There are two giants among us in particular that we have to name names. Uh, it's very important to me. Um, the first, of course, is the godfather of Latino theater, 
Luis Valdez. <laughs> to talk about Latino theater, you know, without mentioning Luis's name. Yes. Uh, the second giant, um, giant among us is Jorge Huerta. Yeah. <laughs> These are the two men that inspired me and other pillars of my success, whatever that may be. Uh, because I don't believe in suffering alone, uh, whatever I've done in the city of Chicago is because of many amazing artists that I have been very fortunate to work with, so I'm going to make some of them suffer with me. Uh, these are long, long time members of Teatro Vista and beyond, so I'm going to call you and make you come up here with me, Gustavo <laughs> Meado. and everyone, all the members of the, the steering committee of the LATC, or the LATC, that too, a shout out to them. No, really, for, for making this possible, look at this room, look at these spaces. You know, where, where's ICE? I'm sure they were out there somewhere. Oh, okay. <laughs> 25 years ago, when we started Teatro Vista, we could only dream of this. You know, we felt so isolated in Chicago. We knew that in Los Angeles, you know, the Latino Initiative existed. You know, we knew about, you know, the Hispanic Playwrights Festival. We knew about INTAR, but we felt so siloed, so alone. And we could only dream about this. And so to be here, standing here, looking at all your beautiful faces, you know, I, it's like I'm ready to explode. So <laughs> thank you for making this a reality. Um, you know, I wouldn't be here, none of us would be here if it wasn't for the playwright, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and it seems to me that given what the Carnaval is about, it's only appropriate that I use this opportunity to, to put a challenge out to all of you. And, and these last few days, I've just been just amazed looking at all these young faces, you know, these these young actors and these young directors and these young producers. Frickin' Dallas, man, I grew up in Dallas. I, I couldn't have dreamed that there would ever be a, a Latino theater in Dallas, so David, thank you. Uh, so it's, it's, you know, we would be nowhere without the playwright. And it's so fitting that in, in this opportunity, this Carnaval, that I issue a, a challenge to all of you you, you actors and directors and producers to support these young playwrights. Georgina, what an honor it's been to work with your plays. <laughs> so, good God, these are amazing playwrights, you guys. Produce them, direct them, act in them, knock on doors, fuck borders, fuck labels, ignore them, don't pay attention to them in any way. Go to knock on every door and any door and demand these plays be produced. Produce them. Do them yourselves or have people demand that people produce them. We belong everywhere. In the community, in the, high, in the biggest cultural institutions of every city in this country. We have to do that. That's your mission. So the, you know, the five of us, and I'm so honored to be included among 
this group of my friends, my colleagues, my heroes. You know, we have done what we can and we've passed the torch to you. And now it's your job to go out there and kick ass. You know, and because of Luis and because of Jorge, we've been able to do, you know, and many, many others, uh, do what we've done. And now it's your turn. You know, so go out, go out and do it. And thank you so much for being here. So let's have a round of applause for our five giants. And here's one final crowd <laughs> that the members of the Latino Theater Commons have talked about. There's a giant among us as well in the room who's sitting right, standing right here. Yeah. Yeah. down leader, like, you're going to do what I say, and that's how it's going to go. Um, <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> but the collective uh, that I, I've learned, the commons mentality that we've learned from Polly Carl and HowlRound, and that we've, and also, of course, from the many, many uh, uh, Latino theater movements, which have all been about collective, I believe in my heart of hearts in the power of the people to take matters into their own hands. Somebody said to me earlier uh, in another meeting, you know, have we done everything we set out to do? This was just at the end of a meeting. I was like, we always do. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much Woo! for doing everything we set out to do, and we're going to continue doing it. Bravo! Our sixth giant theme, the artist as advocate. And I'd like to reflect back Henry's words and the challenge for all of us to become producers and creators, but also to support these 12 playwrights that appeared before us today. So playwrights, please stand up. <laughs> And so, those of you who saw something interesting this weekend that stirred your passion, raise your hand and make some noise. Artists, or one of those artists. 
<laughs> Please shh, raise your hand and make some noise. <laughs> one of these playwrights in your theaters in the next three to five seasons. <laughs> Step forward, raise your hand, and make some noise. Gala Hispanic Theater in D.C. Gala Mia Theater Company in Dallas. San Antonio Latino Theater Alliance. El Teatro Campesino. Teatro Vivo, Austin, Texas. Aurora Theater, Atlanta, Georgia. Intar Theater, New York. Su Teatro in Denver. Festivities begin again. <laughs> 